Peter in Denver, Colorado, right down the street from us, writes to me. He says, Dear Paul, many, many years ago when I was a budding audiophile with a very limited budget, I was desperate to get my hands on quality tube amplifiers that would deliver me the tubey bliss I had experienced at my friends' houses. When I finally had the opportunity to purchase a quality all-tube integrated amplifier from a reputable manufacturer, <laughs> manufacturer er, uh, I was dismayed to see that it only produced 20 watts, much less than the solid state integrated that I was hoping to replace. My friends assured me the tube watts go a lot further than solid state watts, and sure enough, my new tube amp drove my existing speakers just as easily as my solid state amp, even though the tube amp had roughly one third the power. What's going on here? Are tube watts really worth more than solid state watts? And if so, is there a rule of thumb that tube owners can use to help determine which speakers will pair well with their amplifiers? Okay, well this is a common notion and there is some modicum of truth to it. Mostly it's not at all. <laughs> all right, so let me explain. First off, we have to go back to basics and remember that our loudspeakers are all based on what we call a sensitivity level. And that sensitivity level is measured and quantified by a series of measurements that all come down to a very simple formula. And that is, how loud does the speaker get when you put one watt into it and stand one meter away from it. How loud is that? And that's that measurement for sensitivity, okay? So that's really important. The FR30 loudspeakers, for example, are about 88 dB. And that's not particularly sensitive. It's medium, a little higher than medium. A sensitive speaker would produce 91, 92, and a real sensitive speaker, high, very high efficiency, 93, 94. What that means, again, put one watt in, that's how loud the speaker is going to play. Now you can imagine if you put 20 watts into that speaker, depending on the sensitivity, it can play extremely loud. All that to say, most amplifiers are never coming close to using the number of watts that they have available. So the typical 100 watt amplifier driving a 90 dB loudspeaker that doesn't have a lot of impedance dips probably isn't going much more over 20 watts when you're playing it really loud. Now, having said that, why do we go with big amplifiers? Well, part of the reason is the bigger the amplifier, the greater the linear region. In other words, I've used this analogy before. In other words, think of a car with a tiny engine that is able to take the car up to 60 miles an hour, but in doing so, that sucker is grinding away as hard as it possibly can versus a big beast of a motor that just loafs along both cars are going at exactly the same speed. One is struggling to do that, the other is not. And that's why big amplifiers in general sound better because we're using a very small range of their capabilities. Now, when you have a tube amplifier, tube amplifiers have a couple of characteristics that are not shared by solid state amplifiers. One is the way they clip. Tube amplifiers are very soft in the way they clip. So you can get very close to the top of the range and you don't really hear it changing character too much. And even if it clips, it's kind of a rounded off thing. They don't have great current and high frequency response capabilities. So they don't clip as nasty as a solid state amp. And so, of course, you don't want an amp to clip. That can damage your tweeter, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So with a tube amp, you can get pretty close to the top end without really hearing a huge difference. Not the same 
with a 20 watt solid state amp. You start getting close to that, A, you're endangering your speakers because of its capability of a sharp clip, and B, because it will sound worse, and you will notice it squeaking. No, oh, squeaking's a bad word, because people take me literally. You'll hear it straining, if you will. So yeah, two watts are easier to get closer to the limit than solid state watts, and in reality, just from a wattage perspective, we really don't need as many watts as one might imagine. Okay? Hope that helps. Thanks.